uh, one of the things we're looking forward to at the end of this COVID-19 scourge, if it ever occurs, we're hoping that sometime next year we're going to have this all behind us and we're going to take a picture of this fellow to our left because in September, if all goes right, instead of just being Allegheny County Covington Sheriff Hall, he is liable to be, and most likely will be, the president of the Virginia Sheriff's Association. And that, um, Mr. Sheriff, has got to be quite an honor. You've, you've been one of the officers for, what, the last three or four years, but now you will assume the, uh, the uh, presidency of it. Right. And, and there's several initiatives, I guess, the Sheriff's Association, from pay to programs, uh, that they would like to see happen statewide. Uh, how important is this new job going to be to you? Well, it's going to be, you know, real important. It's like I say, it's a great honor. You know, your peers seeing you and, and electing you to these positions. You know, it's not something that I don't take lightly. Uh, you know, I've represented the Sheriff's Association for the last six years. I've been, you know, I just got reappointed to the 911 Services Board. And, um, and then, you know, of course, I was on the Opioid Commission. Uh, through the governor's office, but you know it, it's going to be great working with them and working, you know, during the general assembly session. And uh, you know, I have to thank the board of supervisors and John Lamford, you know, for allowing me to do this because sometimes, you know, it does require a little bit of travel outside of, you know, Allegheny County. But I feel like, you know, um, it's going to better Allegheny County. And hopefully, I'll help better the the sheriff's association bringing some of the ideas. And you know, a lot of times. Sheriffs in Southwest Virginia feel like they get left out because of the higher metropolitan areas and things. But uh, with the new reform and everything that's going on, it's a pretty important time for us. You know, we just had a training uh, the other day for crisis management and, and dealing with media and national media. So hopefully I'll the get pesky media. Yeah, hopefully I'll get you know uh, that'll help me deal with with you guys and give you guys what you all need and 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 things like that and be able to promote our agency better and. Uh, it's just, you know, it's going to be an honor. Hopefully, you know, I feel sorry for the guy that had to go in before me uh, that, you know, he didn't get to, you know, we didn't get to have a conference and him, you know, get the traditional way that everybody else and people get to come. And hopefully you'll be able to make it over there, you know, if you want to come over. I'd like, love to have you over there. And uh, hopefully, you know, so my family, you know, my mom doesn't drive, so, you know, she still lives on Potts Creek. And so hopefully my family and, and people at the sheriff's office that, you know, they put me where there. You know, the, the the work they do, you know, like you said before, I get a lot of credit for, but I got a lot of great people. And uh, without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at and I wouldn't be able to do the things, you know, that I do. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to that, you know, to that year and hopefully I can, I can help move our sheriff's association forward. That seems like a great opportunity for you. And, uh, well, one final thing, Mr. Sheriff, uh, speaking of people, during the last uh, calendar year, there's been a little controversy between your office and the city of Covington about funding. And actually, you know, every year, people may imagine out in the public, well, the sheriff just writes out his budget and submits yeah. it. No, everybody says, you know, fine, and everything's good, and the guys get paid, and yeah. the jail gets run. But as we all know, at least in the media, it's not quite that simple. So right. you had some meetings here uh, during the last calendar year, a little bit of controversy. How's your relationship with the city of Covington and its city council? I believe my relationships are better. I mean, me and the mayor met a couple of weeks ago. You know, this this thing has been, you know, everybody says it's been going for a long time. I just want to know, look, I spent 22 years in Covington. I love Covington PD. They were great. They helped me get to where I'm at today. You know, but I'm passionate about what I do, and that's when it, what comes out of me sometimes is when, when we don't have the, the 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 money, the resources to do the things that we need to do out here, then that's when I have controversies with our board that you know I've had before when I went about deputy pay, and I'm always going to fight for our people and stand up for them and to help them better do their job because if we are able to do that, then we're giving the citizens everything that we should give them instead of a, I don't want to do anything halfway. My, you know, like my dad said, my, my father-in-law said, if you don't do it, do it right the first time and do something, you give 110%. So well, if you don't have the funding, then it's hard to do those things. So we've had, you know, that caused a little bit of a, you know, uh, some disagreements with us, but a lot of it 
is a is a lack of communication and and partly on my on me also but you know prior to being the sheriff i felt like people didn't even realize that covington was even part of it all the, you know people in covington knew that they voted you know they vote for the sheriff but nobody really knew that you know you were the sheriff of the city of covington and you know i've tried to put that on a car so that you know they would recognize that and you know, we've had our little differences, but, you know, myself and the mayor, we serve on a, a racial and justice committee, and a few weeks back, he was like, um, me and you got some of the same ideas, like, come, you know, I'd like to, you know, have a path moving forward, and uh, I said, well, come on over to the office, and we sat down and talked. And That's refreshing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm open, and I need to communicate better with them. They need to communicate better with me, but at the end of the day, we do a lot. You know, the sheriff's office does a lot that some people just really don't see, or, you know, some of the council members, I don't believe, had the knowledge of what we were actually doing, and it felt like, well, why are we paying them money when we have a police department? But I don't really think they understood about what we were doing and the things that we helped them do. And, and there are a lot of joint operations. Joint operations. You know, they need X support right. and backup during the Right. Time. I mean, they have guys in a, you know, a certain area, you know, and, and, you know, we have more area. And, and it's just, I think it's a, I think somewhere down the road there were some, some city managers and, and, and people that just didn't understand and, and, and then it just, you know how things snowball around here sometimes and and, and then, you know, it, everybody's looking for money and it, so I think we're working better. I think we're moving better. We've got a different kind of budget going this year. I think they understand better where we're at. I've communicated better with them. We've And I understand where they're coming from, you know. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I'm the first sheriff that's ever even gave them a budget. You know, when I started giving them a budget, you know, they just always got a bill, and it's not knocking any of the other shares, but I think, you know, I felt like, well, here, I'll give them a budget, you know, even though they didn't really get a vote on it, but, and then, you know, there for a while, I was like, well, why are they mad at me when I've been, you know, sharing this information, which never got shared for, you know, 50 years or <laughs> longer, you know, 70, 80 years, whatever, since 1953, you know, this agreement that they did in 1953, which I feel like, those people back then were really smart because otherwise they would have had their own sheriff for the city, a sheriff that run a jail, and would have been duplicate services that they would have been paying, you know, more money. So I think they were really smart back in the day when they did the shared service and the 26%. So I think we're getting better, our relationship better. The problem is the COVID, uh, we, we stopped meeting prior to the election, and then we didn't start talking in even again until, you know, like the end of January, I was like, hey, where are we at? We need to put this put this behind us, and uh, then you know the COVID started. So sure. we 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 got to put this behind us. We got to move forward. You know, the citizens of Covington, we provide them a service, and and you know, but we got to have the funding to do it. And and uh, PD needs us. We need PD. So we need to work together. If we're not all working together around here, then we're just butting heads against each other. And you know, that's not how I want to do. It, you know, like you know, me and the mayor talked one other times. You know, we shouldn't be. You know, are we going to go at odds with each other for the next four years? You know, because we're both, you know, going to be here for the next four years. You know, his election's coming up, you know, next week. Or, you know, do we work together and try to make things better? And that's what I want to do. And I felt like I've always tried to do that. But, you know, any time when there's money involved, there's going to be problems because, you know, you're going to raise taxes. But I feel like we have a better relationship. We've got a good relationship with the city manager now. I think she understands sheriffs somewhat better coming from the area that she came from, having to deal with the city sheriff and the police department. So I'm looking forward to where we can head and to make, you know, the law enforcement, you know, our the whole area, even Clifton Fours, that, you know, I feel fortunate that, you know, I felt like I helped Chad, you know, working under me, Chad, maybe, Wickland, Chad Wickland, Wickland Chief. I felt like, you know, he worked for me for a while, that he came up through our ranks that, you know, I felt proud of him, you know, I felt like hopefully I had an impression that led him to where he was able to get this position here. So we've got a great relationship with them. We've always had, you know, we helped them. We just used a range. So, you know, it is about having relationships. If you don't have those, I've been there before when they don't get along and it's the guys, puts the guys in a bad, the guys and girls out here on the road, it puts them in a bad spot because they always work great together because that's all you have. But when the administrations don't get along, then it puts an uneasy feeling with them, and it, that's not that's not how to operate. We're out here to provide a service to people, and, and we need to do it the best way and as professional as we can.
Well, there you have uh, the face of one of the uh, many law enforcement officials, and in our opinion, one of the movers and shakers in the Allegheny Highlands, stressing more and more cooperation, professionalism, even getting having a great relationship with Iron Gate, yeah. uh, participating in the area, Allegheny Highlands Drug Task Force, and several other initiatives. He's a busy guy. I said, Sheriff, carve out 10 minutes for us one of these weeks and drop by. He did. And we thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate it. It's, you know, it's great being here. And I'm sorry I didn't mention Iron Gate, but yeah, we, you know, they don't have a town officer anymore. So, you know, we've been sending officers down there and, and helping them out. They and, seem very happy yeah, with the relationship yeah. you've had with them. Yeah, we've got, so, uh, you know, everything's moving forward. I feel like, you know, uh, things are getting better here in the Allegheny Highlands, and that's where it needs to be. I mean, you, you, you go to all these other places, and people get along, and you see, you know, things happening, and that's what I like to see, because I get frustrated when, when things don't, don't happen, and uh, I guess it's my patience. My patience now is not as much good as what it used to be, so I don't like for things to take years to get, you know, get going. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm Debbie Fleshman. I'm a nurse practitioner at Alliance Express Urgent Care in Covington. We are currently available to test anybody with symptoms of fever, fatigue, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, or any symptoms that are concerning for COVID-19, flu, or strep. 